Hi! So today I want to talk about the next few videos that I'll be doing for the app development with Swift course. Let's go over to the book and here we're looking at Unit 3A, Building AR Apps with Xcode. This is a new section that includes a lot of lessons that cover how to build AR apps. What I want to do is show all of these lessons in a video. I'll do a video, one or two videos, however long it takes to go through all of these lessons. Previously, uh, I've only been focusing on the main project. And so because AR Kit is very new and it's an exciting technology, something that I think a lot of people are interested in, I want to cover each one of these lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to jump right into Lesson 3A.1, The Augmented Reality Template. Let's go ahead and open Xcode. And from here, we'll create a new Xcode project. We want to select the application template Augmented Reality App and choose Next. Here we're going to give it a name. We're going to call this AR-Template. Then we want to make sure under Content Technology, we're selecting Scene Kit. These are the basis of how content is rendered. Sprite Kit is for 2D AR apps, and Scene Kit and Metal are for 3D AR apps. So we want to select Scene Kit and choose Next. Then select a place to save this, and we'll go ahead and create. Now, we want to run this on our device in order to see it in action. You can't run this in the simulator. You have to have a device connected. It's important that you set up your project so that it builds for your device. Right now, um, I'm using Xcode 10.2, which just came out. And let me check something here. It targets, notice here under the project, it targets 12.2. We want to change that. If your device, I haven't upgraded my phone to 12.2 because I'm lazy, but the point is, is that um, in order to build this on your device, your device has to run the latest iOS version uh, that supports AR Kit, which I believe is iOS 11 or higher. So I'm targeting 12.1 because that's what my device has. If I were to try to run this for example, um, of course now it won't let me select 12.2. If I were to run this and I select my device, notice what happens. It says OS version lower than deployment target. So that's where I'm selecting 12.1. You may not run into this. Don't worry about it. If you keep your, your phone updated, you should be in good shape. Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. So we select the template and then we select the device and we go ahead and choose run. Now, the build failed, so that's good. Let's find out why. Signing, okay. Let's fix that. Let's go back to our project and let's go to the target. And here, um, we, need to using, we need to use a team account. Now, if you have uh, an Apple ID, which you will have because you've got an iPhone or an iPad, you need to log in with your Apple ID. You can test apps on your device without a developer account. You don't have to pay the $99 or whatever it is for your country in order to develop and test the app on your device. If you want to distribute the app for beta testing and for through the App Store to sell it or for free, you have to pay for the developer account. But for now, you don't have to do that. You just log in with your Apple ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I wanna blur this out so that you don't start emailing me. Okay, once that's signed up, it's gonna show your Apple, your, um, Apple ID. And then if you happen to be a part of any developer accounts, it'll show up here. Um, but that's all we need. So go ahead and close that out. Now, under Team, select where it says your name and personal team. So once that's selected, then it's going to go through the process and now you can build on any of your devices. Again, this is just a local build. You won't be able to export this for anyone else to test. 
go ahead and run. I've got my phone here connected and what I'm going to do is share, I'm going to share my phone based on the, um, I'm using QuickTime. If you connect your device to your computer, you can use QuickTime to cast what you see on your screen to the computer. So as soon as this builds, I'm going to show you what it looks like. You may uh, run into this where it asks for your password. This is for accessing when you log in on your computer, you're using your computer password. And the reason we're doing this is to allow you to sign the app and it uses Keychain. And so choose always allow, and then you won't be prompted for this. So what's happening is this is loading up on my phone. The first thing it does is it asks me for permission and you have to allow access to your camera, otherwise it won't work. So we're going to, we're going to say, okay. And now who we get a cool effect. Hey, look, there's my camera. There's that. Anyway, <laughs> I did not think this through. So the point is, is you now have this spaceship that you can navigate around. Cool. If you press down here on the bottom, you can see this kind of statistics for this and uh, cool. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more. If we come over here and we look in our project window, you see a few things that were that are common among uh, other application types. So we have app delegate, we have a view controller, we have a main storyboard. If I open my main storyboard, um, it's going to look different than other uh, storyboards. The way this works is there is a scene called AR Scene View that represents the entire screen. And so this, if I look in and I look here, so here we have UI View class, UI View class. If I go to my Scene View, notice it's AR SCN View. So its base class is off of this AR scene view. If I come over here and uh, look at my art assets, notice this is a different file, scene assets. And here we've got the actual files that are rendered. So here's this jet airplane. And if I click and drag, I can view it. So this is kind of a 3D viewer, 3D model viewer. And then here is the texture for that 3D model. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the info P list. And I want to call out something here. Um, if we look at the required device capabilities, notice that it says AR kit. So that's required so that it runs only on devices that support AR kit. The other thing you'll notice here, it says camera usage description. Let me show you what that says. Camera usage description. This is a string that's required when you go to submit your app that you've built and you submit it to Apple, if you don't include a description for why we use the camera, then Apple's going to reject your app. So just keep in mind that you need to add text. So for example, we would say um, to see all the cool things in 3D or whatever. You know, you're just indicating so that when that permission request pops up, you're saying, this is why I need access to your camera. Okay. Let's take a look at the view controller class. And here we have everything that's lined up in order to initialize the AR kit, create a scene, load the assets and present it to the viewer. Notice that we are importing scene kit and AR kit. So those are important in order to load and run. Here's the scene view, AR scene view reference. Notice in the view did load, uh, we're setting up our scene and initializing it. This is something to notice here. We have view will appear, which we create our configuration and then we for our session, we run the configuration. 
And this happens after the view will appear in order for things to be set up properly. Notice here under the scene view dot show statistics equals true. That's where we saw that extra uh, display information at the bottom where if you press that, press the plus button, it shows additional statistics for your scene. This is very useful if you're rendering a lot of 3D objects and you're wondering why things are slow and you need to kind of debug into it. So you can reference that. Obviously you don't want this set when you go live. So keep, keep that in mind. Here we have additional functions. Um, View will disappear. We call, we call sceneview.session.pause. This is critical to keep, make sure that nothing continues to run in the background while the app is not in focus. And below here we have some additional scene view delegate methods that you can listen for in order to identify what's happening with the session. A session is considered um, from when the app runs and loads the content and is using the camera to project information. When the session is running, it's using a lot of resources to uh, render the camera as well as calculate space within the camera in order to show the uh, 3D objects or whatever objects you have on screen. That takes a lot of processing power and memory. It's important to track your session so that you don't let things run in the background or run after you've navigated away from the camera view. For example, if you're integrating um, your AR uh, session with other UI elements, you want to make sure you're pausing or stopping that session. Let's go back to our art scene assets and let's open the ship scene. Um, when we take a look here, we want to see kind of what elements are here. If you look down here, there's this little side button to show this sidebar. So notice when I select the ship, we now have a coordinate system that identifies the location of this ship in relation to the view, the scene, that, the session that we're showing the camera. This uh, mesh represents the actual 3D object and emitter is another object that's associated with this. If I go back here and I'm taking a look at the ship, the question is, how do I know where things are in relation to the camera? When we look at this coordinates, we have uh, X and Y and then Z, which represents, if I move this forward, Z is the forward front and back towards the camera. So you imagine that, that you are the camera and we are moving the object in relation to the camera. If I come over here, uh, in my inspector and I'm looking at, what is this? The node inspector, you'll see the position in relative space. So as I move this, I can click this arrow and I can move this in space and I can identify. So here's the Z space, as you can see, this value is changing. And the same with, uh, if I click and move it in X and Y space. So this helps you determine how do I know where the object begins is uh, rendered within a scene and that is based on the position here in our scene graph for the ship. One thing I wanted to note here we're looking at the ship as a whole and we have a position of the entire ship but notice that the uh, origin arrows, this coordinate arrows, they're not centered on the ship itself. If I click on the ship mesh, you'll notice that there's an offset. And so right now this offset is 0.8 or 0.1 in relation to the origin, which is the main kind of root of this ship. So keep that in mind. This is how this particular example is set up. And that's important to note that you can have the, the ship seen, and then you can have various meshes, which are the 3D objects within a scene that have position relative to the scene. So it's um, it gets a little involved when you're talking about 3D space, but it's important to understand when you have a position, you, you have X, Y, and Z, which we've talked about, and those positions can be relative to each other. You can have multiple objects. So right now we have a scene, and in this scene there's only one object. You can have a scene that has multiple 3D objects, 
and each one of those will have a position relative to the origin of the scene. So when I place this in the view of the camera, I'm placing the scene at a specific origin, meaning uh, X, Y, Z coordinate. But within my scene, I have various meshes, and here I have this ship mesh, and the ship mesh is offset in relation to the rest of the scene. So for example, if I had multiple ships and I wanted one ship to be further away and one closer, I would place the ship mesh and various objects in relation to their position. This position is in relation to the ship scene. When I place the ship scene in a certain location, everything else is related to that. We'll come back to this as we go through, but just it's something to think about as you consider what does it mean when I place something in a scene and I place it on the screen. So if we go back to view controller, um, there's a way to see some debug options. What that does is it allows you to see more visual representation of where things are within a given scene. Within the view did load, we're going to set another parameter and it's called, so on the scene view object, we're gonna say debug options and it takes an array and we're gonna pass in ARSCN debug options dot show world origin and then we close out that array. Okay, let's run this. When the app starts, wherever you're holding the camera, it, it determines and establishes kind of its origin and it tries to detect a flat surface and in this case, I've got a, my little messy desk that it's going to render. So if I pay, if I notice here, what's happening is now I see the origin. So now it's showing me where everything is in relation to the origin of the scene. It's a little confusing, I know, with these double images, but anyway, that's what's considered the debug options. Okay, so we've gone through, we've run through the initial example for the AR kit template. From here, we're going to use this template in the rest of the lessons and we will be modifying and creating additional content um, that's to kind of demonstrate. Each lesson will start with the AR kit template and then we will uh, expand on it and build off of that kind of foundation. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe and uh, I promise I will continue putting out more videos and I'll try to do it on a more regular basis. So thank you for being patient and uh, look for the next video. Thanks.